Lebanon seems to be on the brink of a political crisis again. A United Nations panel has been investigating the 2005 assassination of former Prime Minister Rafiq Hariri. That tribunal is expected to implicate members of Hezbollah. Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasrallah, in an elaborate presentation, tried to implicate Israel, which has strongly denied all such claims. Joining me now from Atlanta, Octavia Nasser, former senior editor for Middle East Affairs at CNN. She was born and educated in Beirut. Joining me from Washington, Robert Wirth, the New York Times bureau chief in Beirut. I am pleased to have both of them on this program. Octavia, I'll begin with you. Tell me uh, about this investigation and what the conclusions seem to say. Many conclusions, really, uh, over the years since the investigation began. Uh, but lately, as you mentioned, uh, Hezbollah members seem to uh, be heading towards indictment. As soon as the news broke, uh, we saw a lot of movement on the part of Hezbollah, basically trying to, uh, first of all, flex muscles. Uh, Hassan Nasrallah, the SG of Hezbollah, said that no one touches uh, even half a member of Hezbollah. Uh, later uh, this week, he showed uh, what he called is evidence uh, that could could link, possibly link, uh, Israel to the assassination. Uh, so uh, as far as the investigation goes, uh, we really don't have any evidence that is put forth uh, as of yet. We're hearing a lot of speculations. Uh, we're hearing uh, uh, leaks. But also those leaks are turning around and, and changing, sometimes overnight, sometimes within weeks. But certainly what Hezbollah provided this week uh, is about to change things around yet one more time, because uh, the tribunal is asking Hezbollah to hand over over all evidence they have so that they can look at it and then see if Israel could be implicated uh, for real. So what's the next step? The next step is for Hezbollah to turn the evidence over. And the problem with that is that Hezbollah is calling this tribunal uh, a, a puppet in the hands of Israel and the U.S. So basically they are discrediting the tribunal to start with. As a matter of fact, just look at how Hezbollah provided the uh, what they call the evidence. Uh, Hassan Nasrallah called for a pre press conference. At that press conference, he released the information. He didn't even go to the Lebanese government uh, with that information in that video. So Hezbollah is acting. Uh, pretty independently of everybody. Uh, what's next is going to be, will Hezbollah turn over the evidence to the Lebanese government or the, to the tribunal? And if they don't, uh, where, where does that put the credibility uh, of this tribunal? The credibility right now is uh, uh, very much in question. And you have within Lebanon, uh, there is a dialogue going on as to what the prime minister, uh, uh, the son of the assassinated former prime minister, uh, what is he going to do? He's now the prime minister. Is, and he heads the government. What is he going to do? Uh, how is he going to deal with Hezbollah and this new evidence? How is he going to deal with the tribunal? Uh, so the question of credibility is, is going to be something to be addressed and addressed very soon. So what do you think about that, Robert, the prime minister of Lebanon and the son of the assassinated uh, former leader? Yeah, I think he has to play this very carefully because he seems to reject Nasrallah's claims it's very easy in Lebanon to paint someone as a Zionist tool, that kind of thing. So I think he, ha he has to basically uh, 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 listen to this and, and be willing to be open to it. Um, and, uh, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what he does uh, in the coming months. He's been made a lot of trips to Syria. Uh, the early expectation was that Syria would be, and this was the early speculation after the assassination, that the Syrians' intelligence service or uh, uh, other people in the government might somehow be implicated, but that all seems to have gone away. That's right. Um, now everyone believes that Hezbollah will be will be uh, uh, indicted. It's not clear whether they'll be indicted uh, for actually sort of being the culprits in this killing or merely being sort of a, 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 a sort of felony murder type uh, situation where they would have provided some uh, a car or explosive. In other words, uh, having played some some minor role. It's just not clear what kind of evidence the court has, and they've been very silent about that. But do you have any sense to, of, of who actually did it, who carried it out? Well, you know, ever since 2005, a lot of people have said that the only people with the ability to do something like that in Lebanon would, would be the Syrians. They had a tremendous network of, of, of intelligence surveillance. They were, up until 2005, militarily occupying much of Lebanon. Um, and that's been the, been the assumption. Of course, they have strongly denied that ever since. And so what, what are the implications for the Syrians of, from this investigation now? 
I think the Syrians feel they're now in a confident position because uh, it's been years and the only uh, people who were detained in connection with this investigation, four top state security uh, uh, generals in Lebanon, have since been released for lack of evidence. These were men, uh, in particular one named Jamil Syed, who were very close to Syria. Um, so the Syrians now feel that they probably, probably the tribunal doesn't have enough evidence to go after them. And their influence in Lebanon in the meantime has been rebuilt considerably. Um, in some ways, they're in a better position than they were. They don't have to have military forces in Lebanon, but there are plenty of politicians who are willing to do their bidding. But does that include Hezbollah? Oh, yes, they have a long standing relationship with Hezbollah, although it's tricky and complicated. Uh, some people say that Syria might actually be happy to see Hezbollah politically sort of taken down a notch. By, the, by, by these indictments. There's, there's no question, I think, that if the indictments do come out, even if Hezbollah uh, ignores them completely, as Nasrallah has said he, he would, uh, most people seem to think they would be sort of a moral uh, uh, strike against Hezbollah that would undermine the party's reputation for integrity. What's their reputation in Lebanon today, Octavia? Hezbollah, and, and how deep are they in the government? Look, uh, Hezbollah is seen in Lebanon as a resistance. It was established as resistance to the occupation, the Israeli occupation of southern Lebanon. It remains uh, uh, so. It really got uh, empowered uh, in 2006 uh, uh, after that war uh, between Hezbollah and Israel. Uh, the mere fact that they survived that war, that they remained on their feet, that uh, Hassan Nasrallah was still alive at the end of the war, uh, that made them even stronger in the region. Uh, of course, since then, they also became part of the government in Lebanon. So Hezbollah is seen as an integral part of Lebanon. Uh, they have uh, a, a lot of seats in government, uh, so they can play a role in, in blocking uh, this tribunal, for instance, they can play a role in, in making life very difficult uh, for the prime minister, for the country to move forward. Uh, so they are a, a power uh, to be dealt with very delicately, and it seems that this is how the Lebanese government is dealing with them. As a matter of fact, as soon as the news of the indictment uh, uh, came up, uh, we heard news that the prime minister, Hariri, uh, went to Hassan Nasrallah, the uh, secretary general of Hezbollah, and told him about the indictment. As a matter of fact, we also heard news that Hariri himself asked the tribunal to delay the announcement of the indictment uh, so uh, to avoid uh, clashes, to avoid uh, trouble within the country. So basically he went to, to Hassan Nasrallah and said there will be indictment, that's what I'm hearing, but uh, these might be rogue elements within Hezbollah. This doesn't mean an indictment of Hezbollah, uh, the militia itself, the group itself. And what's their relationship to Iran? A uh, very close one, a uh, very, very close relationship to Iran. Uh, Iran provides uh, uh, training, weapons, uh, money, support. Uh, it, is, it is a relationship that uh, Hezbollah talks about all the time. They're very proud of it. Uh, uh, definitely not apologizing for that relationship and not uh, having a relationship in secret. Uh, so, so definitely a strong relationship uh, with Iran. And this relationship is starting to translate on the ground. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, when, when uh, we had that clash last week uh, uh, on the border between the Lebanese army and uh, the Israeli army. Uh, uh, it, it was very tense for a couple of days there. People thinking a war might bro break out uh, because of that tension. Uh, as soon as uh, we started hearing news, for example, that the U.S. is going to stop aid to the Lebanese army, Iran stepped in to volunteer uh, to support the Lebanese army. Well, this is the effect of Iran and Hezbollah being very close, and Hezbollah basically using the opportunity of a clash on the border between Israel and Lebanon and that, this time around it's the Lebanese army and the Israeli army uh, and, and basically stepping in and saying we will support the Lebanese army Iran stepping in immediately and saying we will support as well and, and what's at stake for the United States Robert and, and what leverage does it have well it's not clear how much leverage it has at this point I mean uh, the Bush administration made clear that it took the side of uh, what was then called the Cedar Revolution in 2005, when there was a very strong anti-Syrian uh, movement. Uh, but gradually, uh, and a lot of uh, anti-Syrian politicians seemed to believe that they had the U.S. behind them at that time, that the U.S. might even intervene militarily um, and, and push Syria out. But gradually it became clear that this wasn't the case, that the U.S. was too tied down in other uh, conflicts. 
Um, and, uh, and this really hurt the anti-Syrian coalition in, in Lebanon, which was, uh, it was known as March 14th. You had a lot of defections. Um, and that led to this gradual rebuilding of Syrian influence. Now, obviously, the United States doesn't want to see Hezbollah strengthened. It doesn't want to see Hezbollah take a greater role in Lebanon. It certainly doesn't want to see the Lebanese army uh, uh, becoming mingled in some way with Hezbollah. And the Israelis, obviously, I mean, the Lebanese army has been seen for a long time as this neutral force, kind of an ineffective force, but it's been seen as this neutral force. If it is now seen as, as sort of aiding and abetting Hezbollah and therefore, you know, able to make war on Israel, that's a bad situation for the United States. And, and what about France, which has always had an interest in uh, Lebanon? I think their, their position is very much like that of the United States. I mean, they have, on the one hand, been very instrumental in making openings to Syria um, and, and, uh, and, you know, reaching out and engaging even before the United States did. Um, there's commercial transactions there and so forth. Um, but I, and I think they, saw, they thought the policy of isolation with Syria didn't make any sense. Nonetheless, they don't, also don't want to see uh, a conflict in Lebanon, and they don't, they don't want to see any strengthening of, of the Syrian hand in, in South Lebanon or, 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 or Hezbollah. In, in a word, Octavia, I assume that Israel's fears are of Hezbollah and, and how much it is rearming and, and how far-reaching those uh, armaments and missiles might be. But what else does Israel fear about the developments in Lebanon? Well, several things, uh, really, and it depends on who you ask within Israel. You know, different groups have different fears, uh, and, and ordinary citizens of Israel have uh, uh, different fears as well. Uh, ordinary citizens, for example, don't want war. Uh, you, you hear it from them, uh, uh, especially on social networks, uh, for example, on the Internet. Uh, these are the people, the ordinary Israelis, that say, we do not want war. And any time that you, you, you hear tension uh, in the air, as a matter of fact, this is coming from both sides, the Lebanese side, uh, ordinary citizens, and Israeli as well. As far as the government is concerned, uh, definitely the government of Israel is making it clear that they will defend their border. Uh, they're saying that uh, they are not going to stand up to, uh, they're not going to accept uh, anyone challenging uh, the security of Israel. Uh, they've maintained that position all along. So as soon as uh, there was trouble last week uh, with the Lebanese army, uh, of course the IDF is saying that the Lebanese army started uh, uh, shooting at uh, the Israeli soldiers and they uh, returned fire. But basically they're saying they will protect their border. And that is something uh, that, that Israel is very concerned about, uh, security and they will do everything they can to protect uh, their borders. Uh, now, take it a few steps further and talk about, um, you asked about the U.S., for example, and, and there is a group within Israel uh, that, that is not as keen on war or on conflict uh, as, as others might be, and they're saying they don't want the situation to get out of hand, in other words. Uh, so try to resolve the situation early instead of getting to a conflict situation where Israel Israel has to respond because as soon as Israel's border is threatened or Israel's territory is threatened, Israel will retaliate. Uh, so you have a group of people saying, uh, deal with the situation early on. Don't wait for an explosive situation because then it will mean more. And then you have others saying, uh, we're standing by any any sign of attacking uh, our borders or our land. We will retaliate. One last question, Robert. When will these indictments be returned? We don't know. The, the, the tribunal has not said. The Lebanese press has been full of reports about them coming in September, uh, but they may well come later. Um, I, I might just want, if I could, return Please. to the previous point and, and say that um, uh, Israel has said that uh, if there is another war, it'll be a much larger, more catastrophic one than the one we had in, in July 2006. Um, and Hezbollah, for its part, has answered that, saying, you know, we've got better weapons than before. We're going to hit you harder. We're going to hit Tel Aviv. You know, it's, so uh, there's a fear that this could not only become a, a more catastrophic war in terms of casualties on the ground in Lebanon and Israel, but might also draw in Iran, might provoke an, a, a strike on Iran from Israel and become a broader regional war. And I think that's a big part of the fear that's going on. Yeah, I mean, I think you just put your finger on it. That's why Lebanon is so potentially explosive. Yeah. On that, thank you very much, Robert Wirth, New York Times, Octavia Nasser, Middle East affairs expert from Atlanta.